It's the Terrible Lorax movie. Now this movie came out just about around the Universal 100th anniversary, at a time when Illumination was just about starting to get into the Dr. Seuss projects that they had. They didn't quite have the grasp on the Mario movie, so we're here instead. Now I'm hoping to do a terrible movie episode pretty much every weekend at this point. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, come join for the ride. So let's not diddle daddle on any more time. It's now 2012, so let's get into things. Hello everybody. Is that Danny DeVito? Oh, this is gonna be a ride, I can tell. So he's speaking on stage to introduce us to the concept of Thneedville. A town without nature and no trees. The Lorax is rhyming his poems out, but I assume it'll only be narration this entire movie. It'd be great if the entire dialogue of this movie for a Dr. Seuss movie rhymed, but this is illumination we're talking about, yeah. Now we have water delivery and, and kids jumping about the town. And as we're introducing this little montage to the strange architecture of Thneedville, which I believe is mostly original to the movie, the book only really goes on to the naturist backstory that we'll see in a bit, the whole town is singing to us. Yeah, you can kind of tell this is the original part. It's, it's not quite Dr. Seuss levels of poetry, is it? But the town is screwed. Water makes you radiated and glowing. The parking cars is a whole thing. As we come to see our villain. Where he's getting a business pitch about how they might have finally found a way to sell air. And to tell you the truth, uh, give it a couple more years and I'm sure we'll get right there too. Our kid protagonist along the way has a super plane. Is this meant to be the future tech? Even I have this as a kid. Alright. I guess we're quickly starting to see how dated the original source is and how unapologetically the movie wants to not update any of it. But in having it, it's an excuse to go to the boy's crush. But they seem to know each other anyway and they seem to get on quite well, so it's a little elaborate but we'll, we'll take it. And she wants to show off something cool to the boy, graffiti. Once again, this is a theme of graffiti cool in a kinda terrible movie. But those are trees, real ones. They were softer than anything and smelled like butterfly milk. Audrey here wishes to see a real tree and wants one growing in her backyard one day. So, if a guy got her one... Well, I'd probably marry him on the spot. And that's the kickoff for our entire plot. I've seen arguments about this film about how why isn't she the protagonist then if she's the one with the desire to bring back the trees. It's kind of a bit restrictive if you put it to the guy will fix this because he has a crush. But hey, it's dated. And as we've already established, Illumination has no interest in updating its dated material. It's not even that badly dated, but the parts that are, are. Anyway, let's see the execution. Don't play with your food. You either, mom. Hmm. So now the kid is snooping around for info about a real tree. Meanwhile, the mom is more into techno trees. Disco! No, please stop, Illumination. Stop doing your Illumination thing. Please, I'm begging you. And it's the grandma who comes up saying you need to find the Onesler. Oh no. This is the movie with him in it? She tells of the man who knows what happened and where to find him. In more poetry terms, nice. At least they're adapting Dr. Seuss a little bit more in places. He'll tell you everything if you bring him niche knickknacks. 15 cents. Is that adjusted for inflation? And so the kid scoots out of there through a door in the wall, which then leads to an actual alert going on. Don't know why there is a door in the wall if it leads to an alert, but okay. O'Hare here, the villain is noticing it now. Is O'Hare from the books? I, I feel like they might also be an Illumination original. But the boy scoots around through a labyrinth of pollutant factory stuff. Don't pay attention to it. Until eventually they come to see... The Deadlands. This is an environmental movie. It's about deforestation. I sure hope there isn't an advert for a Mazda SUV supported by the Lorax. So the boy scoots through with events, you know, they fall into a ditch, they go along a cliff edge, they see sign, you know, uh, content. They come to the street of the lifted Lorax, and then finally the Onesler's house. I was wondering earlier, why is he called the Onesler? Because it kind of just sounds like the one slur, which is... Very much, I assume, not the tone they're going for. 
I don't think this is meant to be a an allegory for anything like that. Apparently, it's a play on the Once Upon a Time vibe. So he is a Once Upon a Time character. The once -ler. All right. Anyway, a trapdoor swings the kid in the air and he's caught by the house. But the kid has found him, the once -ler, and they talk through the window. Rejected at first, and then he mentions trees. But I didn't think anyone still cared about trees. And the Wansler goes on to say that they're all gone because of me. As we come to see him as a young man. It, it's all a flashback? I wasn't actually aware of this when I first watched this movie. I, I never saw it as a kid. I get that the book is entirely the Wansler's kind of story. But I think something's really lost on this adaptation in the fact that the actual plotline of this movie is just a generic, here, let me tell you my story kind of story. Even if that's what the narrator of the books is sort of presenting the story as, I think what you've really done is just bloated it with a slightly uninteresting real world. This is the part you come to the Lorax to see, I would assume. It's certainly why Tumblr's here again. Because this... This is the sexy man! And he only exists in the past? Oh, all right then. Eventually, anyway, he wagons to paradise. Norway, if my eyes don't deceive me. Oh, and now there's singing fish and bear and birds. It's a display of nature. But also, under the illumination lens, it looks more like one of those fake short animations that get shoved onto your iPod for some reason. Remember those? And the Wansler contributes with... This is the place! Auto-tune. Oh gosh, remember those days? I didn't realize this was such a musical movie, but I guess that starts to make sense considering Illumination Sing. <laughs> and so antics roll out. All the animals are angry, and it's all resolved with marshmallows. What is this movie? So then the Wansler starts chopping down a tree. I had just summoned. A mystical creature as old as time. 22 minutes in, and we finally hear of the Lorax. Beyond a single sign. And so he spawns in. Saddened by the loss of a single tree. God, this guy would hate natural disasters. All of the animals come together to supply rocks for the funeral too. And so the Lorax goes to confront the Awansala. I speak for the trees. The Wansler responds by giving him a marshmallow, and then he starts deconstructing the home. The Lorax curses the Wansler. But I didn't listen to his warning. And then there's just a bunch of padding about hearing more of the story, as the Wansler kicks the Zac Efron kid out. By the way, he's Zac Efron, if you weren't aware. Despite his reservations. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe, just maybe. And again, I think this is like part of the problem. Obviously with a Dr. Seuss book, it's very, very short. Literally just a bedtime story. So they had to pad out this story somehow, but by having it just be, I need to get to the guy to tell me the story of the movie I want to see. And in the meantime, I'll exist in the day. It's not the best formula for a movie. I could see a kid switching off pretty quickly because I am and I'm 27. But it's Audrey having a birthday party, blowing out a candle cake. And the Zac Efron kid comes swinging down the stairs, knowing just what she wished for. Was it perhaps... Or this? But of course it was a dream. He's kissing a cereal box. So no, we can't see more of the Wansler plot, because the family is busy playing... board games instead. This movie is only 90 minutes, and still there are so many additional scenes plugged in to waste your time. I knew I could break her. Go see him. Actually, it was Granny delaying things to bore the mum to make him go to the Wansler now, so it's also not even a non-plot delay, it's just a beat. You know, we, we came out of the story to get a dream, almost board games, and then the board games were interrupted anyway to go back, I don't know. And Ted is now approached by Mr. O'Hare, where he's like, I'll be your worst nightmare, don't go poking around in what you don't understand. O'Hare reveals he has eyes everywhere, and how he has a lot of things in town to handle your short attention span. And then the kid runs outdoors anyway, and isn't stopped by anybody. Clearly you missed me, a little, right? You see, and we're just right back to it. This is just a lot of padding, but it's also not that impactful on the story or the audience. And even this scene isn't even going into the story first. It's more of a back and forth between the two of asking why he wants to hear the story instead of getting to the story. The kid goes on to explain that he's going to get a tree for this girl after the Wansler works it out. And then finally we're off back to the actual flashback story whereby he snitted a sneeze. The very first. It's... Fabric, 
He goes to bed and is lifted away. Yeah, this is still a 2012 Illumination movie, right in the middle of their tropes. They swing him into the river, sending him away. Oh, but they left one bear and need to rescue him, for he can't swim. What an action scene with a slow moving bed. Mostly non-verbal characters. Oh, but now there is he's gonna be saved. Where'd you go? Yeah, it's just padding the movie. We should rename this movie The Lorax. That was a very slow, poorly done joke, I'm sorry. The one slur falls into slightly more rapid rapids. Fish are singing, the end is nigh, and finally he wakes up for the waterfall. What? We're in a river. Ah! What commentary. But it continues, seemingly getting worse. There's a bigger waterfall now, and the Lorax drops a boulder, all four. Ah! The Lorax officially has a kill count, but uses the bears as a defibrillator to wake him up. That's nice. I like that gag. I feel like there hasn't been all that many gags, to be honest with you. Unless you count pop culture music callouts. The bed does a flip at one point in the river. That's fun. And appreciation for surviving turns into distaste for chucking his bed in the river in the first place. So they actually communicate. One Slur declaring that he'll never chop down another tree because everyone else needs them. Thank you for making it halfway through this video. As per usual, do check below to see if you are subscribed. And as I said earlier, we are doing these terribles every week. There'll be another one next weekend, hopefully. So poke us on our Discord server for suggestions on what to cover next. I've got all the Illumination movies on my list. But for now, I'll let you get back to the rest of the terrible 2012 Lorax movie. <sighs> back we go. <laughs> So it's the next day and everyone lives here now. It was cold outside and it seemed so cozy in here, they say. This is their way of keeping an eye on him. More conflict out of nowhere. Because to be fair, conflict is kind of the fuel of a movie, but uh, okay. Meanwhile, the once love finally gives the Thneed pitch. It's a swimsuit. <laughs> Playing music in the gondola, but was hit with tomatoes instead. The general public lashing out at him, and overall just hating his design. Yeah, this is the kind of etiquette of the current modern general public, I feel. But it lands on one girl's head and... Hey, cool hat. Now it's a slice of life in the nature. He cooks pancakes for everyone. It's almost a lovely little pocket of something, until interrupted by a crowd of people. It's another song about the need. Someone find that guy's hard drives. The Wanslur then goes on to invite their family to come here. But back to the kid in town now, who still hasn't heard the entire story despite visiting on two separate days. He's taking Grandma to Mini Mart, where he goes on to see Audrey. And then we immediately move on. Was it a needed scene? Really? Now Audrey comes home to see the graffiti has been removed. And the kid uses his bike to swing out of the boundary, going through the houses and over the rooftops. See, this is a nice bit, especially with the Susian architecture going on here, yet it's somehow not that exciting to look at. I don't know if it's the music making it dull or what, but this bit here is so unexecuted. Maybe a pop culture song would have fit better here, because it just happens in front of you this time. Anyway, back to the flashback. It was all downhill from there. The family has arrived. They're all rednecks with no regard for nature. Oh, hitting home on the theme here. They're ready to get to work for the Wansler, even though they were all berating him earlier, but family is family, I guess. The caravan extends very Illuminisusian, I like it. And the Lorax comes to intrude. The Wansler is here telling his vision of a town full of Thneeds, to which the Lorax says, which way does a tree fall? The way it leans. That sounds profound. Was it Dr. Seuss that wrote that? Y yeah, yeah, he did. That's where the intelligent dialogue comes from. That makes sense. God, whose idea was it to put Illumination in charge with the rest of the dialogue? The family then comes round to say that harvesting the tufts is taking too long. We could always start chopping down the trees. And so they do. The auntie even going as far as to dispose of the Lorax somewhat. And of course, they're all upset. With the Lorax being like, hey, you broke your promise. You're better than this. Uh, Sure. And for the kids that really don't get the idea behind this movie, they have the Lorax go out of his way to outright say, This is bad! 
<laughs> Which, I know Illumination is aiming low for demographics, but I've never seen an idea or theme be so overtly said. This is bad. Oh, God. And so, the Wanseler does the thing. He brings out the guitar, and he does the bit. How bad can I be? I'll say it again. How is this guy the Tumblr sexy man? And so, it's a montage of the factory being built. And doing it as a montage allows us to skip any confrontation against the supposed weeks it would take to build Sneedville. All against the backing of these vaguely gradient backgrounds. Which, yeah, I guess looks like a nice sunset, but the rest is really just easy, unbudgeted, empty space. I can't believe this is in an Illumination movie. They were really pushing for full efficiency on their movie. If they didn't even want to do the backgrounds anymore, yet make so much profit. And the PR people are lying! Wow, this is so on the nose considering how Illumination treated the IP with a sponsorship. The Wansler now has gone full send on being evil, despite his clear connection with some of the animals before. And now, finally, the Lorax appears. So how are things? What are you doing here? The Wansler goes on to ask why he hasn't used his powers yet, and how nothing really is going to stop him. Until the one last tree falls. It's time now to look in in despair for the Wansler. I mean, it's probably more over the horizon. You just gotta move a little bit. But yes, that's what stopped him. Finite resources. I wonder what the next million dollar invention's gonna be. And that's what had O'Hare gun for clean air. The family leaves disappointed in the Wansler now. The animals can't live here anymore, so they commute away. I know that walk. Yeah, this was essentially the UK the day after Brexit. Lorax then lifts himself into the heavens? Uh, I'm sorry, this isn't meant to be serious. He's literally hoiking his own ass. And the Wansler is left all alone, bringing us back to present day. He's been regretting it every day, confused by the unless stone that happens to be on the floor nearby. But the kid is the reason to turn things around. Nothing is gonna get better unless someone cares a lot, they say as he drops a magic seed to the kid. You need to plant it, Ted. Why exactly the Wansler couldn't do it this entire time if he had the seed or whatever? Uh, wh I don't know. Okay. And it all has to go to the kids, of course. All right. Off you go, Ted, Zac Efron. Nobody cares, but make them care. Plant it in the middle of town so everyone can see, he says. It's not about what it is, but what it can become. There are elements of good writing in here because this is taking elements from good writing. But God, is this movie execution not really it. And so the kid heads out, being like, I won't let you down, hairy man. So he sneaks into town. He calls out to Audrey to meet at his house, leaves the seed in his room, but water pours onto it, as O'Hare also arrives in his house, demanding the seed. But despite closing into the room that it was in, it's gone. This doesn't involve you! Suddenly, the mum has the guts to, to call him out and kick him out. Turns out Granny has it now. Dunna how or when, but... It's finale time. Now, Mum also enjoys the real seeds, despite earlier calling out for the disco trees. All right. As Audrey comes in. And you're going to help me plant it right in the middle of town. So they drive right to town. The non-minion minions following. Why only them and not O'Hare as well? I have no idea. It's a car chase. Kind of. It's not very built for it, though, is it? And certainly not as appealing as it could have been. Oh, hello. <gasps> But it was a distraction. O'Hare was one step ahead, I guess, in chasing the second wave. Huh? Wow. Aww. Still not that interesting of a chase sequence. But they get to the elevator in time. The villain grapples up to the top, wins the sea to the air, and they snowboard down. I mean, I guess it's vaguely good. Again, the environment here is grandiose. The snowboarding grandma has already been done with Hoodwink though. And again, the tone is just muted the whole way. It's like the architecture and the design is really good because of its source material, but just the execution in making this impactful is lost somewhere in the illumination machine. And the seed is in a plastic bottle. And that's the defeat as he crashes into the cafe. They need to plant it, but there's no dirt anywhere. So Granny then commandeers a digger. There's dirt under the floor. Why would we need a tree? 
Exactly! The villain is here to monologue about the badness of real trees. As one final push to switch him away from the public opinion that this is good. Think about the kids. Huh. Real political lines there. The kids respond by saying the trees create clean air for free, and that destroys his entire argument. Though the crowd returns to fight alongside O'Hare anyway, to which the kid crashes into the wall. And so, the public witness the Deadlands on the outside. He monologues about speaking for the trees before showcasing the seed. Where did the Onesler get it anyway? The villain goes on to tell us what you think. You don't know me, but my name's Sai. Oh, okay, maybe don't tell us what you think, Sai. Everyone then each starts to sing about Let It Grow. Hold on, are you kidding me? Let it grow. This movie predates Frozen, and it has an almost identical lyric as its main piece. Let it grow, let it grow. Let it go, let it go. Incredible. As much as Megamind must have been kicking it for having the less successful minion, I bet Illumination's kicking it for having the less successful Let It O song. And then even the villain gets involved. Nah. <laughs> I say let it die! That's fun. As they physically assault him and rocket him away. Very illumination. Does a rocket not also produce environmentally pollutant fumes? The town finds another excuse to sing and dance about it all as the Wansler looks out. Thank you, Ted. The kid gets his plant planted, he gets the kiss, and we time lapse the growth of the tree. <laughs> The one slow watering, witnessing birds, and also the Lorax appears again, landing on the unless stone. You done good, Beanpole. He did? I thought he hermited in his house for like 50 years, full of regret until someone else popped up to do all of the plotline. Taking the idea of someone has to care a lot to make change, really literally, as it all falls to someone else. Okay, this is a super mid illumination movie. Illumination is in charge of the execution of this movie, right? Was any of this actually memorable? Maybe that how bad could it possibly be, but that's just an overt overexposure to it. Everything else in this movie was just too muted and boring. This movie, it was an easy cash grab with minimal artistic introduction. From a world as wacky as Dr. Seuss, there was just so little wackiness. At most, it's the architecture of the town, and that's the bare bones of Illumination's contribution anyway. It's nice to see these characters in 3D, a message vaguely got across and then was immediately run over by that SUV commercial, but I guess the idea of Illumination holding back is maybe a good thing, since the alternative would have been way too many more pop culture references, pop culture songs, and overly safe generic storytelling. And that was the terrible Illumination's Lorax. Just another bad environmental movie to add to the piling collection. For now though, I'm gonna end it off there. Thank you very much for making it to the end of this video. Do let me know of other terrible movies you'd like me to cover since we are doing these practically weekly now. And on that note, I shall see you in a little bit.